What's going on, everybody? It is your boy, Chris Mann. I am here at the Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. It is Wednesday, June 12th, uh, 2024. My name is Chris Drummond. Uh, I'm a freelance sports reporter, uh, also a casino host, um, and also a proprietor of this podcast, Work Hard, Play Harder, uh, where we bring individuals in, talk about their why, or talk about why they do what they do and who they are as a person. Uh, I got a special guest that's going to be coming on with me today. Her name is Alex Torres Perez. Uh, she is a news reporter based out of Rhode Island now, but transplanted from Huntsville, Alabama. Also went to the University of North Florida as well. So we're going to talk to her about her why, of why getting into the journalism business. Uh, talk about some favorite things, maybe some favorite stories. Uh, have some icebreaker questions and just get to know her a little bit. Uh, really looking forward to talking to her um, and just seeing how one news reporter thinks from another reporter. I'm in sports, he's in news, so it's two different genres going on. So without any further ado, I bring to you the wonderful, the talented and beautiful Alex Torres. Good morning, Alex. How are we doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing very good. It is wonderful to see your face. I love the green. You look absolutely yeah, thank amazing. You. Yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I just okay. can't be on the CK wall. That's the only thing. <laughs> I, I feel that. I totally feel that. Um, I want to say thank you, first off, for coming yeah. to my podcast, Work Hard, Play Harder. Uh, how's your week been going so far? So far, so good. You know, same, same old, same old. I, I was on vacation last week, so I had that time to rest and then you kind of come back and you're kind of all in and refreshed <laughs> yeah full steam ahead right no no exactly. question about that no question okay so before i start peppering you with all these questions right yeah. i want to reiterate why i wanted to bring you on my podcast so i'm a sports reporter based out of minnesota uh i love talking to different reporters about their why uh, i love talking to different reporters getting to know how they deal through things how they deal with things through the industry, uh, mm -hmm. what they like to do, uh, favorite stories of theirs, and just different questions like that because I love to network and connect. I know you are a reporter that's based out of Rhode Island right now, but you came from Huntsville, Alabama uh, to that's do right. your thing. Um, you, I saw you're real. You're obviously very professional. Uh, it's passionate that what you do, it shows on the screen. Uh, and plus you do a variety of stories, which – as news reporters, you're going to do a variety of stories because every day is never the same, right? So it's always different. So yeah. that's one of the reasons why I wanted to reach out to you, talk to you, and kind of get to know you a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I love speaking about what I do and why I do it. So I, I appreciate you reaching out. No doubt. Okay. Well, with that being said, let's get into the first question. All right. Let's go. <laughs> always the same with every guest that I have on. What is your why? Why do you do what you do? And did you have any role models or inspirations growing up? What made you want to make a career out of journalism? Yeah, so I have always wanted to be a journalist ever since I was a little, little kid. So I was born and raised in Puerto Rico. And um, back then we had like dial up internet and I would do, my parents would call it my research. And so I would research things and I'd give them the presentations about it. And so they would always be like, I was probably like four or five years old looking up about volcanoes and hurricanes and all this stuff and kind of reporting it back to them. So they always thought I was going to be a meteorologist or a journalism just because I had that passion. And then as I got older and, you know, started taking classes about it, I realized, you know, I really do love to write. I like to inform people what's going on in their community. And so um, there was a little uh, time where I thought, oh, maybe I want to be a teacher versus reporting and then <laughs> I realized I, I don't have as much patience with children <laughs> so uh, <laughs> I was like you know what then uh, journalism it is and uh, especially when I started uh, working with cameras and video I, I fell in love with the editing process and you know it was kind of like a no-brainer for me to kind of do that as for role models I wouldn't say I had one that I looked up to as a child. It was always just a passion for learning things and keeping people informed. But as I go through this industry, obviously there are people that you admire and you admire their storytelling. I mean, 
Steve Hartman is probably one of my favorite storytellers of all time. His series on the road, every single story makes you want to (laughs) cry. And that's how you know that you're a great storyteller. And um, so he's someone I I really look up to when it comes to storytelling. I love that. I do. Um, It's funny you said that you wanted to be a teacher because I also wanted to be a teacher before I wanted to do reporting. I really love math. So math was something I really enjoyed and I wanted to kind of help kids out. But when they told me I had to take calculus, I was like, Mm-mm, this ain't it. I can do that. I had the same exact experience. I went into college saying I'm going to be a math teacher. And then I realized I'm not good at math. And right. now, like, I right. try to avoid math at all costs. Right. I mean, dealing with money, I'm good. Numbers is good. But when you start putting X, Y, Z in equations, I'm like, nah, I can't do all that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I feel it. I feel it. OK, that's what's up. We uh, You went to the University of North Florida, which is actually in the same division as my school, which is Kennesaw State University at the ASUN. Okay, so, yeah. Yeah, right? So talk to me about were there any other schools that could have persuaded you from going to the University of North Florida? Well, um, I did get a scholarship to go to FIU, and that was an option. Um, but I think at the time it was more of, you know, I was kind of intimidated by the fact that it was such a big university and Mm -hmm. I was so used to smaller classes and one-on-ones and my mom, she, she uh, went to the university of South Carolina for a short time. And she would tell me these stories where her professors wouldn't know her name. They would know her by her like number or something. And I was like, I don't know if that's something I wanted. So um, I decided to just stay at home, save some money, um, and, you know, just kind of go to a smaller university. And, you know, I don't regret it because I got so many opportunities um, and so many, I, I build so many relationships with my professors. One of my biggest mentors at UNF was, uh, he was an adjunct professor and a former uh, photojournalist for the um, for First Coast News in Jacksonville, Ken okay. Thomas, and he really took me under his wing. He was kind of the person who pushed me to try things I've never even thought of. And um, he would put me like in touch with other opportunities and I would try new things because he would push me to do that. And so I, I kind of preferred the smaller university experience. Yeah, no question. You know, anytime that you get into a classroom where you got like 250 kids or 125 kids, it can be kind of overwhelming a little bit. And especially, uh, those were some of my first few classes, you know, those general ed classes that you get into mm-hmm. college, you get like 90 and 100 kids. But then when you start getting into your major classes, you kind of want to have more defined, more one on one type of smaller classrooms to be able to, you know, kind of really uh, establish yourself in your craft. So I totally understand that. Kennesaw State was like that, too, uh, for sure. Um, and I had the same reason. I wanted to actually go to Arizona State. I thought that they were a very good journalism school, plus the West Coast. I didn't want to deal with a whole bunch of cold. I didn't mind the hot. <laughs> but um, state-wise, I was in Atlanta. My mom, my uncle, my aunt, my family was there. So ultimately, I stayed close and went to Kennesaw State. But that's yeah. pretty cool that we kind of went to the, we went to the same schools that's in the same A-Sun division, which is pretty cool. So I like that. Yeah. And, and I will say with bigger universities, there are perks to it because obviously with you're a bigger university, you have more resources. And sure. so you might be able to like go live while you're in college or something like that. But um, it's like you mentioned, like that small one-on-one, that's something I thought was more important for me. And so, um, yeah. Did your school have a football team? Cause I know mine did it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kennesaw, we, we, um we got one uh, just a few years ago, a few years ago. So they made okay. the football team and yes, that was awesome. And I love going to the games and now as an alumni, uh, I try to, whenever I do visit uh, my mother and uncle and aunt uh, down there in Atlanta, I try to see if there's football season. If it is, I'm trying to go to the game, for sure. Yeah. So. One day, one day, they, they've been pushing for a football team at UNF, but I don't, I don't know if it'll ever happen, to be honest. I hope so. I'm hoping so. I mean, come on now. It's North Florida. It's not really bad weather, especially around the fall time. Like, Jacksonville, you have a football team, professional, and I believe you have a, 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 another football team there, arena-wise, or maybe uh, XFL, I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. But it's a great city for football. So I, I hope yeah. you do I hope you do it, get a team. Sure. It, it's definitely fun as part of the Jags uh, fandom. It's definitely f- fun. <laughs> we may not win too, too much, but, you know, mm-hmm. it's it's all Absolutely. about the fan base, and we're, we're diehards. <laughs> Absolutely, no doubt. 
I'm going to ask you some favorite questions, Alex, okay? Okay. So based upon these favorite questions, you just tell me some of your favorite things off the rip. Are you ready? All right. Here, Here we go. go. Rock. Favorite meal you like to cook? Ooh. Uh, I recently learned how to make a chicken parm, so I'm going to say chicken parm. Alex, we're going to be very good friends. I'm going to say <laughs> that right there. That's what's up. I like that. Okay. Favorite concert you've ever attended? Favorite concert? Um, Pitbull. I loved my, I dressed up as Pitbull for the Pitbull concert. Best experience. <laughs> wow. Okay. Now, I love me some Pitbull. Uh, no question <laughs> about that. Okay. What's your favorite song of his or a couple songs you like? Um, I like his um, Dinero with Daddy Yankee. Like that, <laughs> that combo was a good one. Um, obviously, um, Give Me Everything Tonight is a classic. Oh, no um, question. No question. Yeah, so, so I have a, a number. Um, my friends actually call me Mrs. 305 because I have so many. <laughs> I love his music. And my dad is the complete opposite. He can't stand his music. So <laughs> Wow. Okay. Yeah, I love me some Pitbull. International love is probably my jam. Oh, that's a good one. <laughs> yeah, no question. No question. Okay. Favorite sport you like to watch on TV. Favorite sport you like to go to in person. Um probably football um to okay. watch and on tv and in person but i'm i used to play volleyball and so i just don't get enough opportunities to go watch volleyball so that that would have been my answer if i had more opportunities to go to games <laughs> got you so in volleyball was you the libero or was you the setter or was you the spiker i was a little bit of everything um i think i I ended being an all-around all player. I now would be a setter slash right side hitter. And then okay. there was one game I played as middle because I could jump really high, even though I was really short. So everyone would see me as this short person in, in the front row. And then I'd jump and they'd be like, oh, wait. <laughs> okay. Okay. So you can levitate a little bit. Get off the a ground. Little bit. <laughs> I like that. That's what's up. Okay. Favorite place you've ever traveled to? Ooh. So last summer I went on a European tour. So wow. I have a lot of options, um, but I think probably Italy, more specifically, mm -hmm. the Vatican was, I cried. It was so beautiful. <laughs> I love that. I really do. That's amazing. That's on a bucket list of mine, too, going to Italy. I just Must got do. my passport. I just got my passport. So I'm definitely planning on traveling. That's for sure. Well, if you make it to Cinque Terre, have their pesto pasta. It is I will never eat pesto pasta the same way. <laughs> I love that. That's the, I'm I'm a huge Italian person, Italian food person. I should say Mexican and Italian. Those are my two favorite foods. Mm -hmm. no, okay, I like that. Last of the favorites. Favorite restaurant that you like to eat at? I'm gonna go very basic answer because I go here way too often. And I'm gonna say Chipotle. <laughs> wow, you know, fun fact here, Alex. I've never had Chipotle. <gasps> My brother, my heart. <laughs> I know, I know, you have right? To try like, it. I was there in Atlanta. Uh, now I'm, I'm kind of in a smaller city in Minnesota, uh, so they don't have many of the. Um, they have the regular brand fast food places, you know, the Burger Kings, mm -hmm. McDonald's, Taco Bell, stuff like that. But they don't have like the Chipotle here. Now in Atlanta, they had Chipotle. Uh, I just drove past it, and I didn't know what to what to get because there's so many good choices. I don't know what to try first. I don't think you can go wrong with any choice, especially, I don't know what it is about their rice. I eat rice regularly, like okay. almost every day. And um, something about their rice cilantro lime mix is just out of this world for me. <laughs> I'm a huge cilantro person. Like, oh, carne then you'll asada. really like it. <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Huge cilantro, carne asada, rice, and definitely cheese. Lot and lots of cheese. Uh, yeah, go, definitely have. You have to go there. You have to after this, <laughs> whenever you get a chance. I promise the next time I go there, I will hit you up and let you know how it is. Please, please do. Please I do need up, updates. <laughs> Absolutely. Awesome. Okay. Here with Alex Torres Perez, news reporter based out of Rhode Island on the Work Hard, Play Harder podcast. Let's get into your day to day. We kind of touched up on it a little bit. Every day is not the same. And in journalism, uh, especially with news and sports, I would say those two genres more than anything. Uh, we work long hours. Uh, we don't work conventional hours. Uh, sometimes you have breaking news. Sometimes you have breaking sports news. Sometimes, uh, you know, you, you just 
have stories that kind of collapse on you. Sometimes you're out in the field and you have a source and then all of a sudden the source collapsed and you're like, oh no, now I got to pivot stories. Talk to me about your day to day of how you prepare yourself uh, for each day going into the newsroom. I think you have to go into it expecting the unexpected because like you mentioned, no two days are exactly alike. Yeah. Um, I think when I go in, usually um, I try to come in with story ideas, um, you know, try when you and when you have those story ideas, you can kind of start planning, okay, this is what I'm going to do. This is what I'm going to get video of. This is who I need to speak to. But other days you just come in and, um, you know, they just give you a story and you're like, okay, let's figure this out. So being flexible is one thing. Another thing is being able to, you know, do research quickly to kind of get the general gist and then just kind of getting more information. Um, I will always say that when I do interviews with people, I always want to make sure I leave understanding the the story. So sometimes like when I do my interviews, I will summarize what they said to me to make sure that I understood it correctly and that I can relay it forward. Because if I don't understand the story, how am I expected to share that with other people? Right. So, um, so that's uh, the main thing, but also just kind of being on your toes because you could be finishing up your one story and then all of a sudden, like you mentioned, breaking news happens and you have to pivot to something completely different. So sure. just kind of being flexible and, um, you know, being open to changes whenever and wherever. <laughs> sure. No, I, I totally understand that. Since you are a news reporter, you know, you do soft news, you do hard news. Uh, let me ask you, uh, being in this industry, as you've been in for, uh, what, a few years now, um, how hard is it for you to kind of separate yourself from hard news? It's a question I normally ask news reporters on my platform because sometimes it's very hard to separate. How hard is it for you to separate yourself? It's extremely hard. Uh, Work-life balance is really hard for me because, you know, I – like you mentioned, we don't have conventional hours. Sometimes we're 24 seven and I'm the kind of person that always needs to know what's going on. So I'm constantly checking for updates. If I see something, I'll send it into the newsroom. So it, it it's a balance and it's, it's an effort that you have to have to try to sure. maintain that balance. But also I think um, for me, at least it's necessary so that I know that I can be prepared come the next day. And I'm like, oh, okay, if you're going to give me this, I already know what happened. So um, I think a little bit is part of my passion, just knowing that I always want to know what's going on. And, you know, this is what I enjoy doing, but you also need breaks, I think is very important. Like I mentioned, I went on vacation last week and I don't think I've, ever, I've uh, had a long stretch of time where I just didn't know what was going on. So, um, of course, I'd get my push notifications on my phone, but I really I came back and I was like, I have no idea what happened the last few days. And so right. making sure that you realize that you do need breaks and to actually take them is important just as well. Absolutely. Uh, if somebody came up to you, Alex, and said, you know what, I would love to do what you do. And they shadowed you and, and and, you know, just said that they would love to do that. What kind of advice would you give an individual that wants to be in your shoes and wants to be a reporter? Yeah, I think being patient is number one. I think everyone expects to start their career and getting that big scoop, big investigative piece. And you're like, yeah, sure. like I did it. But you have to start somewhere. So you start with like the smaller stories. You start with going to city council meetings and some stuff that may seem extremely boring, <laughs> but right. you have to start somewhere so that you can start building, you know, how to build a story and how to, you know, maybe you have a a boring topic about, um, I'm trying to think how to explain this. Oh, here's a good example of a story I did recently. So there was a, a bill, legislative bill about mm -hmm. uh, get gun safety. Okay. And, you know, you can just give the nuts and bolts like, hey, this is what they're trying to do. This is what the changes are. But then you find that person who was impacted and you tell it from their perspective. And that changes that that story then becomes something that people can look at and be like, oh, like that. That's why this matters. Or sure. uh, but of course, you also have to maintain the balance and give the opposing sides because, you know, we're journalists and we have to maintain fairness. <laughs> Absolutely. You have to be unbiased, right? Exactly. Uh, no question. Now, so, you kind of touched up on it with the work-life balance. Now, obviously, for me, I'm sports. Sports are nights and weekends. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very tough to hang out with friends when you're getting off at 12 o'clock at night on a Tuesday. It's That's just very tough to do, right? <laughs> 
So for me, uh, Alex, my mental health when I first got here to Minnesota was very effective because one, I don't have any family around. My mother and my aunt, like I said, is in Georgia. My dad, my stepmom, my little brother's in upstate New York. Now I got family sprinkled all around the U.S., but I'm here alone and I've never been to this state before, right? Which you can understand probably moving to Rhode Island. I'm not sure if you have people out there yourself. However, but mental health wise, I'm a huge family person, huge mama boy, all that. Like I had to call her several times to talk to her and it was great. How do you keep your mental health strong and not experience uh, some of the things that our colleagues probably have experienced, which is burnout, um, overworked, underpaid, different things like that? Yeah, um, I think it's like I mentioned, it's a balance. Um, like you, I, I when I moved to Huntsville, Alabama, that was the first time I moved away from my family, period. So it was sure. really tough because I didn't know anyone. I was yep. somewhere I never expected to be. I ended up getting a cat because I was lonely. <laughs> so she helps a lot. <laughs> So That's my, funny. I like that. <laughs> yeah, so uh, yeah, it's funny because I got a cat because I was like, I, I don't have the time to walk a dog. But with a cat, they kind of take care of themselves. And every once in a while, they show me affection. No, my cat is a dog in a cat's body. So she oh. constantly wants to play. She constantly wants to cuddle. So she's definitely helped a lot. Um, I, but love also, I love it. I love it. Um, other things that I do is, you know, maybe watching your favorite shows. Um, I also play piano, so that definitely mm -hmm. helps. Music is a big thing. And when you're actually playing it, like, I feel like I can kind of put all that stress into the music as well. So that's something I do. And um, just exploring and meeting new people, because, of course, we go to places where we don't know anyone but then you start forming these relationships where you kind of form these pockets of families in these cities across the U.S., wherever you go. Absolutely. Uh, and I think that question is very key, like because a lot of people, like I said, are battling with mental health mm -hmm. and burnout because this is a industry where you do work a lot of holidays. You don't get a whole lot of time off. It's a love. You have to love what you do to be in this industry. And I love covering sports. I love talking mm -hmm. to young kids when they ask me questions about college. But I do 12 high schools in a college. That's what that's what I cover. So mm -hmm. I love talking to these kids, whether it's boys or girls, just giving them advice. But I love I love seeing the jubilation. I love seeing them happy when they win a game. Right. It's nothing like values that you learn through team. As you know, playing volleyball, playing on a team and you playing with your sister, your teammate. You just learn these different values and learn these different things. And I love that. But it's also a B-side to it. And you really have to understand the B-side, right? Because people see you, Alex. They see you on TV doing the reporting thing, right? Uh, see the pretty face in front of the camera. Think that it's all glamour. Think that you're going to get the 411. But there's a lot of people that help you to do what you do, right? You you do. You put in a lot of work, no question. But, you know, you got Botox, you got people that is producers, you got just background people in general. It takes a village to run a successful package and show. Exactly. So and that's, and that's why. That's why I like doing these podcasts for sure. Yeah, it's definitely not easy, especially um, because like you mentioned, we sometimes go to these scenes and you talk to people who are going through maybe the worst day of their lives. Without and, question. And that comes that actually can be a burden for you. I mean, you you some sometimes some stories really stick with you and you know so you have to make sure that you take that moment to kind of separate yourself and you know take care of yourself as well I think part of what helps is that you know not every day is like that and sometimes you get to tell these stories of great achievements and mm -hmm. um happy stories that of, of triumph of people or people using their challenges into something good so um I think there's a lot of uh a lot of benefits on top of it and then one thing I've always uh, I've always heard, like, especially on tough days, like when you cover really tough stories, it's a, I forget who told me this, but um, they would tell me that their uh, friend who was a therapist, she would every day after work, she would wash her hair. And it sounds so simple, but on days where I'm extremely stressed out, just wash your hair and it just kind of it feels like it all kind of melts away. And, mm. and that's a little kind of tip that I I. I have whenever I'm feeling like extremely stressed. I feel you on that. You know, uh, when I wash my hair, though, it still it seems to stay still for some <laughs> reason. You know, I don't have the <laughs> I don't have the I don't have the you know flowing beautiful mm -hmm. hair like you do. But at the same time, <laughs> I get the metaphor. I totally get it. You wash it away, 
it's done, it's over with, and you come back and start strong the next day. Like you exactly. said, that's kind of why I shied away from news a little bit. Before I get to the next question, I shied away from news because I know news has soft stories, which is really, really inspirational, so good, such a blessing to cover. And it's a blessing to cover the, uh, the rough stories as well. But it's just it was tough for me to think, okay, how am I going to be able to interview somebody that lost somebody or interview somebody that's in a fire or interview somebody that, you know, is just going through a bad patch right now? And even though in sports, when the kids lose and your season ends, that's tough. It's the, it, was, it was tough the first time seeing those tears flow down those faces of those kids that are playing because you just know it's over and you know the team is going to be different next year. You're not going to have the same team. But it's just – it made me think like, okay, you know what? I really love doing this and I really love telling stories and it's much more beneficial stories than it is of those stories. So – that's why I'm still in it. That's why I still love it. And I'm still passionate talking to other reporters who are passionate about it, too. So I love that. Yeah. And I think my mentality when it comes to like stories where, you know, someone does pass away and you're doing a follow up story, trying to talk to family and friends. I think the way I, I tackle it is that I want to make sure that whoever the victim is, is remembered not by what happened, but who they are and you know love how it. they're being remembered. And I think that that mentality really helps me and it helps the family as well kind of talk to me and, you know, be able to give us a perspective of who this person is. Cause everyone has a story um, no matter yeah. what. No question on here with Alex Torres Perez, news reporter based out of Rhode Island on the work hard, play harder podcast. Alex, we have came to the point now that we're doing this or that. So I'm going to throw two things at you and you just choose this or that. Are you with me? Okay. I'm here. <laughs> All right, here we go. Here we go. Popeyes or KFC? Popeyes. Oh, yeah. Okay. We got to a good start, girl. We got to a good start. <laughs> I like it. Here we go. Chicken wing flavors, barbecue or lemon pepper? Ooh. I think I might go with lemon pepper. Okay. Do you like your wings wet or dry? Dry. Okay. <laughs> Do you like your wings bone in or boneless? Bone in. Okay, so you like to get a little messy is what you're saying. Just a little bit. It's fine. <laughs> I love it. I love it. And especially when it comes to the chicken wings. I love that. Okay. Okay, here we go. Uh, these next four questions have to do with concerts that you rather attend. Okay, so here we okay. go. Which concert would you rather attend? Would you rather attend Bad Bunny or Ozuna? Bad Bunny. Ooh, okay. You a Bad, Bad Bunny, Bunny fan? I, I am. I am. It's funny because I didn't listen to a lot of Bad Bunny um, when he first started. And then um, I think Después de la Playa, that album came out mm -hmm. and I was all in. I was like, yeah, that, <laughs> that album oh, yeah. uh, I really, really enjoyed. <laughs> he, he is definitely a vibe. No question. OK. Kendrick Lamar or Drake? Kendrick. OK. Now I know we can be best friends, girl. I know <laughs> we can. That's what's up. I like it. Yeah, I'm, I'm team Kendrick, too. Here we go. J. Cole or Big Sean? Ooh. I don't listen too much to either of them, but I think I might lean a little towards J. Cole. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I like that. <laughs> I do. I do. Okay. Okay. So the next one here is R&B. Which one would you rather go see? Chris Brown or Usher? Usher. I feel like he, just because he dances so much, I think his mm -hmm. performance is maybe a little more... More like I enjoy watching dances and dancing, mm -hmm. so I think mm -hmm. I, I might enjoy that a little bit more. <laughs> okay, I love it. I love it. Which sport are you going to rather watch on TV? Basketball or hockey? Basketball. Okay, you got a favorite basketball team? I don't, but I I, I mainly follow follow basketball players. So um, I really like Steph Curry. Um, He's one of my favorites to watch, to be honest. But I don't I don't really have a lot of time to watch basketball. I am watching the Celtics a little bit more this year just because I live in Rhode Island and we're so right. close to Boston. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a must. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. OK. Which sport would you rather watch on TV? Would you rather watch softball or baseball? Baseball. OK. I like that. I like that. Are you a desserts person? I prefer salty, but I will eat desserts. I, I'm not going to turn down a donut, actually. Okay. So I'm going to throw four desserts at you. You got to eliminate one of these that you'll never eat again. Okay? Oof. Okay. 
All right, here we go. First one is ice cream. The second one is cookies. The third one is cakes. The last one is candy. Which one are you getting rid of that you'll never eat? I think probably cookies. Mm, okay, interesting. Interesting. All right. All right. Which sport would you rather play? Badminton or bowling? Badminton. Wow. Are you good at badminton? Not very, but, you know, I I feel like I played maybe once or twice, and it, it was fun. So. Got you. I got you. You're in the minority on that. But I love <laughs> me some badminton. I'm just going to say, I love badminton. It's great. Awesome. Okay. Do you like potato chips? Yeah, I, I like a few. Okay. Same format. Four different brands. You got to get rid of one of these brands. Okay, so here we go. Pringles is the first one. Ruffles is the second one. Lays is the third one. And Doritos is the last one. Which one are you getting rid of? That's a hard question. Oh, my goodness. You sat back. So I know that was kind of hard. I know. I'm here like, <laughs> hey, uh, I think. I think I might have to. No, I really like Pringles. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm going to have to go with. Uh, we're going to go with Lays. Okay. I, you know, Alex, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be honest with you. I, I didn't think it was that damn hard. I really did. Uh, Lay's was definitely the correct choice in my mind. Listen, the barbecue Lay's though, I, that's what was holding me back. This is facts. But have you ever tried the barbecue sour cream and cheddar ruffles? I don't think I have. I don't. What is this? This is something new I'm hearing about. Yeah, yeah. You know, they they were a limited time. They were a limited time chip, but. Barbecue and the sour cream and cheddar ruffles are the best chip ever made. They didn't ever. bring it back because I missed my opportunity and now I need this to, to come back so I can try I'm, it. Alex, if I see it on the shelf, I'm buying it for you. Okay, please, that is, please. no question. I got you. <laughs> Say less. Last of the this or that is another concert. Which concert would you rather go to? Uh, would you rather go see Luke Combs or Morgan Wallen? Probably Luke Combs. <laughs> mm, okay. I like it. I do. I like it. I want to ask you this next question about uh, advice, right? We talked about advice that you would give someone, but what is some advice that someone has gave you that you hold on dearly to? Hmm. Um, I think one of the advice is, that I, I think I always feel like I, I portray is be confident no matter what. Um, you know, we kind of, I always fake it till you make it. Cause so many times we go into these scenarios. I'm so serious. So, so many times people are like, wow, you're so confident. And you just go in there and you ask like these officials, all these questions and mm -hmm. you, you get to the story and it's like, no, I'm terrified. Like I have to go up to these people in power and hold them accountable. That's kind of scary at times because sure. sometimes sure. I don't know them or, you know, it, it's, it's, it can be terrifying, but you know, as long as you are confident and you can, you know what you're doing, you know, um, as long as you have the facts and you know what you're telling other people is true and factual and you're being fair to both sides. I think yeah. that that kind of helps me stabilize myself, but in everything I do from playing piano, I would just kind of go up there and like take a deep breath and act like I have it, even though like I may have messed up two or three times, still act confident, no matter what, it did not happen. <laughs> so, I love that. I love yeah. it. No, no. You know, I smile when you say that, because when I looked at your reel, it, it, especially even the one where you talk about the chemical spill, I don't know how you got that cap to pop off on point. <laughs> that is something like, I'm, I'm like, how many times did she practice that? Like before she came it on took, air? It took so many times to get that one shot. It okay. was ridiculous. Cause, okay. um, and it's, it's a fun way of like demonstrating people, um, you know, things that may, may not. So it's, it's one thing to tell people like, Oh, the ground underneath shifted and the road split versus maybe getting like um i think i did this at that same station i grabbed like a popsicle stick and yeah. i i just used it and i was like the ground here shifted and then boom and i split the popsicle stick it's an active way people remember that and that right. um that sticks with people so 
it definitely did with me because I was like, wow, she popped that off right on cue. I mean, this it's about the presentation, right? The presentation and how exactly. you can get viewers to pay attention to you. But you do seem very confident on on camera. Uh, you, that's what has uh, that's what you portray is what I'm trying to say, lack of a better term, mm -hmm. in watching your reel. So you're doing a hell of a job of <laughs> faking it till you make it. No Good. question. <laughs> okay. Um, if you had a chance to pick three albums that you can listen to with no skips, what would those albums be? Hmm. That's a hard question because I, one thing about my Spotify is that you will get whiplash because I listen to a little bit of everything from yep, me too. in me different too. languages. Like you can go from classical music to pop, to hip hop, to country, to K-pop, to Japanese, like everywhere. Um, okay. <laughs> so um, I don't think I, but I usually stick with singles and songs. Um, recently I've started listening through albums. So okay. I don't have specific albums. The only one that really sticks to mind is, um, which one was it? I, I'm a big BTS fan, so um, okay, okay. I, even though I may not understand the language, like the the format and the 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 way it sounds, is absolutely gorgeous. And um, they have the Persona album, which I absolutely okay. love. And I love uh, it. That that's definitely probably the one for me. <laughs> okay, so let me let me flip it for you. If there was three singles, right, single song, songs that come into your mind that you can keep on repeat. Right. And never get tired of listening to what would those songs be? OK. Once again, it's it's a tough question. Um, I think it also depends on my mood because. All right, here we go. My shot from the Alexander Hamilton musical. Wow. Love that one. That's, Love a, that's that a good one. one. That's a good one. Um. Trying to think which BTS song I would never. I mean, I, I listen to them all, but right. I think I'm gonna go with um, "Forever Young" by BTS, which is mm. like an epilogue. It's it's not as as popular, but I, I love that one. And then okay. let's see which is the third one. I think I might do "Bohemian Rhapsody" by Queen. I really love. That. Wow. I think that's a classic that everyone's just like, yes. <laughs> you cannot go wrong with that one. Uh, Forever Young. I mean, I've listened to different uh, alterations of that song. Obviously, Rod Stewart, uh, his version. Uh, then you have Jay-Z and Mr. Hudson's version as well. Um, mm -hmm. And then obviously the first um, song that you said, I think you said BTS and then you said... Um, the Alexander Hamilton, my shot. Yeah, Hamilton. Yeah. Now, I'm a huge you. musical person. I'm a huge musical person. Uh, I acted in two musicals in high school. So I love musicals. Um, and, and actually, this is a great segue to this next question, because if I wasn't a sports reporter, I probably would have went into like Broadway and musical theater and stuff like that. If you wasn't a news reporter, what career would you have chosen and why? Ooh. I don't know. I really don't know because I've always, like I mentioned earlier, I've always wanted to be a journalist since I was a little girl. So mm -hmm. it's always kind of been this. Um, and I really can't picture myself doing anything else, but if I had to, um, maybe, so I, in Huntsville, they're known as the rocket city. So we got to do a lot of stories about space and NASA and, um, I really became fascinated with all that. So maybe, maybe working for NASA. I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> I love that. No, that's great. That's amazing, Alex. It really is. Um, I would love to ask you, what is like some of your favorite stories that you have covered that you have done uh, being in this uh, industry? I mean, uh, like I mentioned, space has been a big one. So being able to cover the, the Artemis launch was spectacular being literally miles away from the launch and feeling the rocket launch and seeing it, it was extremely surreal and very blessed to have that opportunity. Um, some other stories, um, I went to uh, Hawaii with our anchors. They sent us there to cover the 80th anniversary of Pearl Harbor. And wow. we got to speak to so many veterans there uh, about their stories. I mean, people who lied about their age to serve our country. And it, it 
it's moving every every song every story that they tell you and you know as as time goes by you know a lot of these veterans are passing away so these stories they won't be able to be told anymore and so um, to have that opportunity to do that and it didn't hurt that it was in Hawaii either but <laughs> but Hello. the fact that we got to talk to so many veterans and share their stories. And then there was a local marching band there. So we got to follow them and um, during the march. And that was very special. And then another story that I hold really, really close to my heart um, was uh, the passing of the Sergeant Nick Reisner at. So basically there was a North Alabama a police officer called Sergeant Nick Reisner and he was shot and killed in the line of duty. So uh, there was a legislation pat or there was a bill that was stuck in committee that was not going anywhere. So I was sent mm -hmm. to Montgomery several times and I just kind of had to hold the powerful accountable and be like, what's going on? Why is this stuck? Why, aren't, why hasn't this moved along? And, Absolutely. you know, after several visits and several, um, you know, being yelled at and screamed at and, you know, having to push for asking for answers, it passed. And, um, I became really close with the family throughout that whole process, and it, it, it definitely is very close and dear to my heart. I can tell the way you speak about it, the way you smile, the way that you uh, just, you know, advocate about the story is really, really nice. I love listening to that. Um, mm -hmm. This is a two part question. Uh, first part is if you had the chance to interview three people, right, three people that that's in your mind that you really would love to interview, who would those three people be for the first part of this question? I think one person I would really love to interview is BTS. Cause I'm, for me, it, they're just a group that really uh, inspired me and uh, really a formative group for me, their music and what they did. I mean, I, I started following them like, the day they debuted so to see them wow. start from this small k-pop group to this world international i would love to like kind of pick their brain about the process and how they got there so that's one um i'm a big musical fan as well so lynn manuel miranda another person who really influenced my life Bro Hamilton. Love, yep. i i honestly it's funny i, I see him like kind of like a fun uncle to me, <laughs> even though I've never met this man in my life. I see him right. as a fun uncle who has like inspired me to become a better version of myself through his music. Right. And so I think that would be really fun. And um, who else would I interview? Hmm. Hmm. I want to go. I love it. These questions must be good because they got yeah, you. Yeah, they are. I love I'm, it. I'm trying I love to think. It. I've never really had, I don't really have a list of people like to talk to or who I want to interview. It's just the, you know, I go in and I'm like, let's see what, what we get today. Right. Um, well, I'm, I'm going to say this only because today uh, was today, Tom Brady's going to be inducted in the hall of fame here in new England. And so yep. because that's happening today, I'm going to say Tom Brady just to be like, you're here. <laughs> I love it. So. I love it. That is awesome. Now, the second part of this question was, what is three events that you would like to cover? So for me personally, I would love to do, as me being sports, I would love to do a Super Bowl. I would love to do an NCAA championship football game uh, and an NBA Finals. Uh, I think that's just the highest of the highest. I would love to cover that. What would you love to cover? What would I love to cover? Um... Let's see. I would. Um, hmm. I don't know if I have like a list of things to cover. I think I go into it expecting to kind of cover a little bit of anything and the unpredictability of it all. So sure. I don't think I have specific events that I would want to cover, to be honest. <laughs> I love it. No, that's OK. That's all right. Maybe a Democratic convention or a Republican convention you would like maybe like to cover. Uh, maybe a uh, maybe just one of those um, a huge news. I mean, maybe like not I wouldn't say a drive by shooting, but something like maybe like a, a very hard story uh, or maybe a jury trial, maybe a jury trial you would like to cover something like that. I mean, I I really don't think I do because obviously being in news it's like I wish for this to happen so I can cover this like I, I don't right, want any right. of that but, right um 
I'm also kind of kind of an oddball. So like sometimes when I go to city council meetings, I'm like, yes, like I want to cover like the boring meeting that's an hour long because I think this one issue is so specific. I, I like finding things that are may appear boring like at first sight, but sure. when you go into it and you find the people impacted and you find the people who are passionate about it, it yeah. makes it into a story that it, it's more impactful. So I, like I don't it. think I have specific things, but <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Oh, here's That's one. Awesome. I, I got one now. Um, the, oh, OK, I, even though I did go to the first launch, the one when they when first woman will step foot on the moon and the first person of color will step foot on the moon that I would love to go back and, and cover. That's pretty cool. I like that. OK, that's what's up. Um, What else would you like to add? about yourself that you haven't said already before we conclude? Yeah, um, I think one of the big things that I do, so today is my dose format day. So I, I do, I'm bilingual uh, growing up in Puerto Rico. So um, I'm also very passionate about sharing news in Spanish. Uh, so I always wanna make sure that, you know, people in the community are informed and they have that information available. And when I first moved from Puerto Rico to Jacksonville, Florida, uh, one thing that I noticed was there was no Spanish really news outlet back then. And uh, I remember my dad would always like tune into the newscast in Puerto Rico. And I'm like, well, what about here? And it, it just, there was a big disconnect when it comes to access to that information. Now that's gotten a lot better over the years. And now that I am in the position that I am in now, I make sure to take the opportunity to share information in English and in Spanish and make sure that Spanish speaking people across the country have access to to news and information and being informed as well. So in Alabama, I started the uh, I started basically by myself kind of a weekly segment where I would give the top stories of the week. And then the pandemic hit. And when the pandemic hit, it became so crucial and we we expanded it to every single day. So I was doing I was producing at the time. So I was producing an hour long show. And then right afterwards, I would put together a short Spanish newscast with what you needed to know about COVID. And it was the only only station in Alabama at the time to do anything like that. So we did that for a while. And when I came to this news station, they already had a Spanish segment up and running. So uh, I took the opportunity and here I am. And once a week, I'll, I'll put a story together exclusively in Spanish and uh, I share that with that. So I think it's important that, you know, everyone has access to that information. So. Absolutely. Uh, you know, news travels to everybody. And yes, we have, we need not just the outlet for obviously English speakers, but also Hispanics, right? We need mm -hmm. that. People don't know English uh, and they need that outlet to be able to know what's going on. And it's great that you provide that. Uh, it's great that Rhode Island provided that already before you came on board. And I'm happy that you're on board with that. Uh, it's obvious that you do amazing work. Uh, it's obvious, again, that you're very passionate about what you do. You do different stories, which is great. Uh, I've learned quite a bit about you uh, in this time frame that we've had together. And I really do appreciate you being on my podcast here, Alex. Um, I wish you nothing but continued success. Uh, you're a new, I'm a new, sorry, uh, follower of yours, new supporter of yours. And if I'm ever in Rhode Island, I'm, uh, which is pretty, pretty certain because it's one of the states that I haven't been to yet. So I'm pretty certain <laughs> I'll be there. If I'm ever in Rhode Island, I'll have to hit you up for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, thank you for the opportunity to talk about what I do. It, it's funny. I'm never used to being... I'm always used to being the interviewer, not the interviewee. So it was a different perspective for sure. Right. No question. So you're always gathering the information, but this time you were allocating it, which is great. I love that. And, you know, like I said, uh, please continue doing what you're doing. Do more news stories and I will see you down the way. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. I appreciate it, Chris. Take care, Alex. You too. Bye.